little bit of time. Uh, all right, Dave, there we go. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else to take care of this time from either council? Nothing for people. Okay. Um, you can have a seat, Mr. Ke uh, Callahan, and uh, Mr. Shem. Oh, Your Honor, uh, before we do get started, um, because of the nature of this case, I would, um, and the fact that the media is here, I would, I would ask the court if it would permit um, the media to not film the um, victim in this case anywhere above her head to show her face on the media, uh, on the news or anything of that nature, or um, publish her name in any any news publication. Mr. Callanan, what's your response? Uh, no objection, Judge. Is there anyone from the media who wants to argue the point? Okay, so the motion of the people is granted. Uh, the media is instructed not to report the victim's name nor to film above above her neck, you're saying? Yes. Sir. Just don't show her face? Correct. Okay, that motion is granted. Everybody Thank you. understands that from the media? Yes. Okay. All right, anything else to address at this time? That's it, Judge. Can I call my first witness? If you would, that'd be great. Uh, the people call Ms. Chrysler. Good morning, now. Would you, would you raise your right hand for me, Do you either promise, swear, or affirm to the truth, the whole truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, Okay, please have a seat. Um, could you identify the other lady that's with oh, you today? Oh, sorry. Good morning, Mayor. Danielle Hageman-Clark. I'm here um, with the prosecutor's office as well. Okay. Are you an attorney then, ma'am? I am, yes. I'm the lead attorney in the sexual assault team. Okay. Thank you very much for your appearance. Okay. May I proceed, Judge? Well, I prefer standing up in an examination if you don't mind. Is that okay? You want me to exam? Yeah. To stand? You want me to? No, no. Oh, I thought you said, could I have a seat? Oh, no. I said, could I proceed, Judge? Yes, Sorry. you can proceed. Thank I you. thought you said, could I have a seat? Okay. No, no. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Ma'am, can you state your name for the record, please? Sarah Thompson Chrysler. Okay. Now, I want to take you back to December 13, 2015. Do you remember that day? Yes. Um, did something happen that day that brings you to court today? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's go back to December 12th. Can you tell the court what you were doing that day? December 12th, um, I was at the MGM Casino celebrating um, my birthday was the 13th, um, and that's basically what I was doing. Good. Who were you at the casino with? Uh, my husband. And what were you guys doing at the casino? Um, we were gambling and playing games and drinking and just kind of celebrating. Fair. Um, what were you drinking while you were at the casino? I remember having a few Bacardi Diet Cokes and some champagne. Did you guys leave the casino at some point? We did. Um, how did you did you leave the casino in a car? Were you driving? We drove. Where did you guys drive to? Um, I guess 75, 94 to County. Okay. Were you, where were you going? Oh, we were good to Gross Point okay. Farms, yeah. Uh, describe the situation that was going on between you and your husband. Well, we, we were in a fight. We were fighting. Um, I do not remember what I was fighting about. Um, that was basically what was going on. Okay, fair to say that you guys were in an argument with each other while you were driving back. Is that, yes. Is that fair? Okay. Uh, did something happen at some point where you left the vehicle? Yes. Okay, tell the court what happened that caused you to leave the vehicle. Um, my husband called me a name that I was not very happy with, and I, the car was stopped at this red light, and I jumped out. Uh, where was this red light at, if you remember? I believe it was at Harper and Kajing. Okay. And you got out of the car at that point? I did. What did you do when you left the car? I went into the store that's located there and bought two packs of cigarettes. Okay. What did you do after you bought the cigarettes? I started walking towards... Do we have a time frame? What time of day is this month? This is like 11.35. 11.35 p.m. This would be on December 12th, is that correct? Yes. At night? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm guessing 11.35. Uh, sometime before midnight, is that fair? Oh, definitely, yes. Okay. And after you bought the cigarettes, where were you going? I was walking towards Mac. Um, what street were you on? I was on Kadju. I never left Kadju. Okay. Were you in communication with anyone at this time? Uh, my husband. I was texting him. Okay. Uh, from your cell phone? From my cell phone. Okay. Um, do you know the nature of the text messages between you and your husband? Uh, yes. Can you tell the court about the, those text messages? Um, they were very bad. They were, they were, I was very angry that he had left me um, and not come back to get me. And I was having to walk. And so I was trying to hurt him and being just a little crazy and just not the greatest text messages I've ever sent. Okay. Fair to say that you were intoxicated at this time? Oh, for sure. Um, at some point in time while you're walking on Kadju, um, did you encounter anyone else? Um, yes. Okay. Tell us about that encounter. Um, I was 
just past Kaju Cafe, which I believe is a little past Warren, and um, I noticed a very tall, young, skinny man walking past me. Um, he, was, he came from the right. Okay, let me stop you there. Okay, you're, you're are you on Kaju at this point? Yes. What direction are you walking? I'm walking towards Mac Avenue. Okay. And uh, you said you encountered a tall young man. Mm -hmm. Was this man black or white? He was black. Okay. And you said he had come from your right. Can you describe that for the court when you said he, he had come from your right? I, I felt like he, he came from maybe a house or a building on the right-hand side of the road. I did not see him actually come from a house, but he did come on my right side, and he walked in front of me, straight past me, very quickly. Okay, so... If he walked past you, fair to say he was behind you at some point? Yes. Okay. And um, you had heard someone behind you, walking behind you? Is that fair? Um, not until later on. I did not... Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, you're right. Exactly. Yes. Okay. I heard someone walking behind me. I moved to the left. He passed me. Okay. Can you describe what this person was wearing? He had a navy blue, like, basketball shorts and a white, like, sweatshirt hoodie. Okay. With the hoodie on. The hoodie was on his head? The hoodie was on. Okay. And you said this person walked past you, and this would be walking down Kaju, correct? Walking down Kaju. Okay. What happened when he walked past you? Um, he just kept walking past me, and then within, I would say, less than a minute, he turned right back around and started walking towards me. And at this point, I believe we were beyond Kaju Cafe quite a bit. So were you still on Kaju at this point? Still, though? never left. I never left Kaju. Okay. Ever. So you said this person walks past you and at some point in time turns around turns and he's around, walking toward turns you. Right back so I'm going to object to the, the character of the questions. He's testifying. Leading questions? What? That as well as he's, he's, he's repeating what the witness says. I'm going to sustain the objection. Thank you. Okay. Let the witness tell her own story. Thank you. Before we continue, I'm going to ask you some questions. Can you just hold off until I finish the question before yes. you answer okay. so we're not talking over each other sure. because it's all being recorded. Okay? No problem. What happens after he turns around and starts walking toward you? He walks towards me. He either gestures or asks for my cell phone. I do not remember if he said, give me your cell phone, or if he just gestured because I had it in my hand, and I handed it to him. He then goes, so I'm towards, I'm standing towards, looking towards Mac when he comes towards me going the opposite direction. Give him my cell phone. He walks a little bit to, towards, to a yard, a little bit towards the right, this way, if I'm standing this way. I actually turn around and watch him. He's about four to five feet away from me. And I watch him dial my phone twice. He makes two phone calls on my cell phone. And then he turns around. I never hear him speak with anyone on the phone. He turns around, walks over to me, and hands it back. And I turn around and start walking towards my destination of Gross Point. At this point, are you still on catch? I'm still on catch. Okay. Now, when, when you, you just testified that uh, you had, so it's clear for the record, you had turned around at some point after you gave me your phone. Is that correct? Yes. I turned around. I, I'm thinking that I just, I kind of wanted my phone back since I was walking alone at night. I, I think maybe I just wanted my phone back. So, and you, and you did hand it back to me. All right. You, were, you said you were walking uh, down Kaju toward Gross Point, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so I, I, this is going to follow up on the defense's objection. I just... You can ask what happened next, we can hear her story, but we don't need to hear the story from you. With all due respect, okay? I, I think you're, that you're leading and you're just retelling her story for her. Once we hear it, we heard it, we don't have to hear it twice, let's move on, okay? Just ask her to tell her story rather than you telling her for us. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. With we'll all due respect. All right. After you get the phone back, what do you do next? I turn, I, I turn around and start walking towards Mac Avenue on Kaju. Okay. Uh, do you want me, would it be easier if I just do this instead of... Let me ask the questions, okay, okay please? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. After you start walking down toward Mac Avenue, is this person anywhere near you at this point? I wasn't sure at first that he was, but then I realized he was following me towards Mac Avenue on Kaju. Okay. Tell us what happens as you're walking toward Mac and this person's near you. As we're, well, I, I, I was a little nervous that he had turned around to follow me again. As I got towards the, the yellow building, the, I think it's an old phone building, which is very close to Mac, um, at some point I turned around and he was no longer following me. He was gone. And at that point I walked across Mac into Gross Point, still on Kaju. I'm so
several houses in, maybe a block into Kaju, and he appears, he was not behind me that I was aware of because I did check crossing Mac. He appears out of a yard on the right and grabs me by my left arm, pulls me in the yard. Let me stop you right there. No. Before you get there, were you communicating with anyone at that time? Um, I was texting my husband. Okay. Did you, did you say anything at that time um, to anyone else? At the time that he grabbed me? Before that. Oh, before that? Yeah, I did. I, I said, no longer following me, went and crossed the line over into Mac. Did you make any phone calls at that time? I'm and, sorry, and this was a text to your husband? Yeah, text. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. I did not make any phone calls, I don't think. Did you ever give any indication that you were trying to reach some destination? Um, I, I did falsely because when, I, when he was still behind me, I did say there was a van up front on the other ah. side of... When you said that, were you talking to anyone in particular? No. Okay, so tell, tell me the nature of that. I think I was on my phone. Um, I was saying it loudly that my friends were there in that van waiting for me, hoping that he would stop following me. Okay. It was just something I did that... that was this before you, uh, this you was saw him again? This was before I crossed over Mac. So when the attorney's asking a question, don't interject because... Oh, I'm sorry. The court court is going to make a mistake. If okay, I apologize. So. I, I know you're not a professional witness, but just let him finish this question and then, then answer. Go ahead, sir. All right. After you cross over Mac, tell us what happens next. I cross over Mac. Um, I just continue walking. And I, I, I think that this person is not following me anymore, so I'm totally fine. I'm trying to go to Kirchival to my... I have a business on Kirchival. I'm trying to get to my Kirchival. That's where I'm going. Um, at some point... Within three to four houses in, off of Mac, on Kaju, I'm approached from the right, grabbed by the left, pulled into a yard. Is this, can you tell, tell the court who this person was that grabbed you? I believe it was the defendant here. What I mean by that is, had you seen this person before oh, that? Oh, it was the person who was following me in the white hoodie and the blue shorts. Okay. What happens after he grabs you and pulls you into this yard? I said to him, why are you doing this to me? It's the only words I said to him. He did not answer me back. He pulled me to the ground. He held me by my arm. And I thought he was hitting me. It was very dark. I could not really see what was going on. And I would say the attack took less maybe than a minute. Okay. As but he's hitting you, what are you doing? I was trying to fight back with my purse. Uh, you said this attack took less than a minute. What happens when it stops? Um, he runs off to the left towards Mac Avenue, and then I stand up and get on the sidewalk going to the right towards my destination that I was headed towards in the first place. Is this the sidewalk on Kaji where you have just been walking? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, are you in communication with anyone after this happens? Um, right after it happened, um, I walked a little ways, very small ways, and I realized that I'm just, I, I feel very wet. I, can re I can't really see because it's very dark, but I feel, all of a sudden I feel very wet. So actually my phone was on text with my husband, so it was very easy for me to hit the camera button instead of trying to look for my camera on my phone and to actually take a selfie picture to see what was going on with me because I was wet. Okay. And did you take a selfie picture? I most certainly did. What did, you, what did you notice about yourself when you took that picture? Um, I was cut up and gashed and bleeding and my whole, I mean, and I was completely soaked with blood. Okay, after you noticed that, what did you do next? Dialed 911. Okay. At some point in time, did you meet up with police or EMS or anything? Within a very short few minutes, I would guess, two did, or three minutes perhaps. Where um, did you meet up with them? Somewhere around the... 1300 plus block of Kaju towards Kirchville Avenue. Okay, is this near the, the location where the where the attack happened? I would say it was a house or two at most. Okay. I couldn't have walked very far. What type of injuries did you have that you realized at some point in time from this I, attack? I was stabbed three times across the chest. Um, I was slashed on my wrist and then I have this um, face which it's starting to heal a little bit but they said it'll be a year until it heals. Okay. Yeah. For the record, there's a a cut on your face, is that mm -hmm. fair? Yes. Okay. Um, did you go to the hospital at some point in time? Um, the ambulance came and took me to the hospital immediately. Okay. Do you know how long you were at the hospital for? 
I would say probably from 1230 um, on the 13th until in the morning a.m. until possibly 2 or 3 in the afternoon. Were there any other injuries other than you described the cuts? Were there any other injuries that you sustained as a result? Yeah, from my elbow up, I was bruised and I had two or three fairly large hematomas on my arm that it took about two to three weeks for them to finally go away. Okay. <clears throat> All right, at some point in time, did you give a statement to police? I did. Okay. Was there ever another point in time when you were shown some photographs? Yes. Okay. Do you know about how long after this incident that you were shown those photographs? I would say two to three weeks at least. Okay. Were you ever able to identify any one of those photographs? I thought so. Okay. Tell me about that. I was shown a piece of paper with pictures. And I think some were in color, some were in black and white. Um, some were extremely very clear good pictures of people and other one or two pictures were very bad low quality blurry dark hard hard to tell just you know really see anything from the pictures that I was given Eric, can I have something marked real quick yes sir Mr. Callan, have copies, whatever. Yes, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna. Can I approach the witness now? You may. I'm gonna show you what's been marked as people's proposed exhibit for. Can you take a look at that and tell me if you recognize what that is? Yes. Okay. Can you tell the court what that is? That is the picture that I signed that day with the, I was shown to get to pick one of the two of these. Can you turn it over too? Mm -hmm. please? I will. Do you know what that is? That is my signature that I wrote exactly what happened when I looked at this piece of paper. Okay. Your Honor, for uh, the record, I move for the addition of People's Proposed Exhibit 4, which is a Six-pack photograph lineup, as well as a statement from the victim about the photo lineup. No objection. Okay, so admitted. Thank you. Do the courts here, please? Yes. When you were shown this um, the six pack photograph lineup, can you tell us um, if you initially pointed out someone in that lineup? I did. Okay. The After you pointed out that person in the lineup, um, what happened? I wasn't really sure who the person was. No. Okay. I, I I chose that person I think based on the fact that he was very thin, which was my original description and how I saw viewed the person. Um, and it was a very clear picture. And the person that attacked me was wearing a hoodie. So I couldn't I, I couldn't really tell anything about any kind of hair or special features with hair. So I think that's why I initially picked the first picture. Okay. And who were you with at the time when you um, viewed this this these photographs? Detective Narduzzi. Okay. Uh, after you initially picked out that first person, um, what happened next? I, I believe that I said I feel like this could be him, but I'm not quite sure because the, the other pictures were not, to me, as clear as that picture. Did you ultimately uh, pick out someone else in the photograph? I did. Right? I did. Okay. And um, why did you pick out someone else? Why? Um, because I, I, I was. I, I don't really. I'm not. I don't really know the answer to that question. Okay. If you read your statement, would that help you refresh your recollection? Well, I'm sure someone else? Okay. Judge, may I approach the witness? Uh, any objection, Mr. Carroll? No objection. Okay. Yeah. 
thinking. Which, which state? The one oh, in the same exhibit. Okay. If you could read that to yourself, please, and let me know when you're done reading. So it says, I, I, I don't want you to read it out loud. Oh, okay. I just okay. want you to read it to yourself. Okay. okay. All right. Yes. Are you done reading? Yes. Does that help refresh your rec recollection as why you picked someone else out in the lineup? It does. Okay. And can you tell this court why you ended up picking someone else out? Well, honestly, I feel like that those two people look very similar, but because if you take this way and the, the picture, I don't know. I, it's really hard to explain how this came about, but I feel like this person looked closer to it if this had been a clear picture. When you were viewing these, these photographs, did anyone ever tell you who to pick out in the photographs? Absolutely not. show you what's been marked as people's proposed exhibit five. Can you take a look at that and tell me what that um, what is on this uh, sheet of paper? Uh, it's me after I was attacked. Okay. Were these the selfies that you took uh, that they you were. described earlier? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Uh, I move for the admission of people's proposed exhibit five. Mr. Kelly, man. No, Judge. So, do you want to? I'm sorry. I have no further questions. Okay, and just before you begin, Mr. Kellen, uh, the one thing you didn't establish is uh, what city all this occurred in. So it was on Kansas, but I don't know if it was in Grosse Point Park or Grosse Point City. Could you ask those questions? Sure. Ma'am, um, can you tell the court again uh, the initial area of the streets where this incident occurred? Um, my initial contact or the attack? Where the attack occurred. It was. Somewhere very close to the 1300 block of Kaju, okay. which is in Gross Point. Far, no, no, I'm sorry, park, because the city would be across the street. I was on the park side. Okay, so when, you're, when you were walking down Mac Avenue, were you walking on the right-hand side of the road or the left-hand side? The right-hand side. Right -hand side mm -hmm. the okay. Yeah, and I was well past B3, which I do believe was the start of Gross Point. And this attack itself happened on that right-hand side of the road, is that yes, correct? Yes, it did. Okay. okay, thank you. Mr. Kellerman, thank you. So at approximately 11.30 or thereabouts on the evening of uh, December 12th, you get out of your husband's car, right? Yes. You're intoxicated at the time, correct? Yes. You go in, you buy a couple packs of cigarettes, correct? Yes. You immediately start texting him, right? Yes. And those continue almost uh, nonstop, really, until, uh, until about midnight, correct? Yes. And uh, at some point in time, um, you notice that uh, there's an individual behind you, correct? Yes. And according to what you said today, this person passed you on the right. Do I have that correct? Yes. And uh, when he did, he didn't say anything to you, did he? No, not at the time. All right. And how, uh, how far did he travel in front of you before he stopped? I would guess 20 to 30 feet. I'm, I'm guessing here. I, I do not know that for a fact. Okay. And in fact, you you talked to the police that night, correct? I did. Right. And you had difficulty, did you not, establishing where this took place at that night? I did in the middle of, yes. And the following day, after you were discharged from the hospital, the police came to your home, correct? And you once again made statements to the police, correct? I did. And at that point in time, you still had difficulty expressing where this occurred, didn't you? I possibly did, considering I was on medication as well. 
straight from the hospital. Now, um, so it's right around midnight that uh, you see this person pass you, correct? Yes. And at 12.02 a.m., you text your husband, stole my phone, but I got it back, correct? I did. And that references, does it not, the fact that uh, you had allowed the individual who passed you to use your phone? Yes. Okay. And then... Did you answer yes, you have to speak up. Yes. Okay, here's the court report. I am so sorry. That's right. And then at 12.05 a.m., you text your husband would not cross the line. All right. Those were your words. So he wouldn't cross Mac Avenue, right? That's what I thought. Well, what's, what does would not cross the line mean? Just to Detroit over into Grass Point. That's a racial thing, isn't it? Okay, I'm would a, not cross I'm the line. Wait, wait, wait. There's an objection. Absolutely I'm Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Ma Ma I'm sorry. Ma'am, ma I control the courtroom. I'm sorry about what you're going through, but we have to run this in orderly procedure. And I have a question and I have an objection. I have to listen to the objection. So could you just wait? And yes. Answer? Thanks very much. Yes, sir. My legal objection would be rel relevant, Judge. There's absolutely no relevance to that statement, and there's no foundation whatsoever for the kind of question that's being asked. There's been no indication that there's been anything to do with race involved with this whatsoever. It, I think it's a question just to inflame the witness, if anything. And I, so my legal objection is that it's not relevant at all, Judge. Okay, I'm going to um, uh, overrule the objection. Go ahead. Your question was, what is that? A, is that a racial comment? Is, is that, that a racial, racial comment? comment? Yeah. Is that a racial comment? Or not? No, it's not. And shortly after that text, um, in fact, at 12:05, you text your husband and say, "Sleep good," correct? I don't remember that. I can't well, refresh your recollection, maybe, to look at the, um, the, the texts themselves. Possibly, if that's what you'd like. May I approach? Uh, have you seen what he has on his hand? I think he's going to show me right now, Judge. Yeah, that's good. Are, you, are you all right with him? Yes, Your Honor. Right, you can approach Mr. Callahan. <laughs> I'm going to be referencing. What are you showing her, Mr. Patterson? I'm showing her uh, copies of text messages from the Gross Point Park police reports that are copied verbatim from um, her telephone. And this is discovery you got from the police department? And this is discovery that I received from uh, the prosecutor's office, yes. If you just at the ones at 12.05. Okay. Um, it says, sleep good. I will send attorney papers on Monday. Is that what you want? Well, there's, you got another one at 12.05 as well, right? You know, I, I'm assuming all of these didn't come at the exact same time, but. Well, but the last text at 12.05 is. Um, well, apparently there are lots of texts at 12.05. I'm going to object right now. If, if, if. So Mr. But Ms. Callahan, would you wait for a minute, please? Yes. I believe the whole basis of showing her this was to refresh her recollection, mm -hmm. and now I think they're just reading it back and forth. So if he's going to refresh her recollection, I would ask that she be able to read it, and then he could ask, ask the question if that refreshes, if she remembers what uh, anything from what his original question was. No, no objection. Yeah, okay. Proceeding in that manner. Okay, that's what we're going to do. And do you want to come back around now? She, can, she doesn't need to hold them over. Do you have an extra copy that you can look at at the same time? Uh, I can use the press. Okay. Alright, so why don't we come back around and get on page number else. We just need to page number. Or we can make a photocopy if you yeah, don't have an extra. No, that's good, Judge. He's got it right here. Okay. At twelve oh five AM then. Um there are uh uh referenced uh, one, two, three, four, five text messages that occur uh, separately at 12.05 a.m., correct? Yes. And the last of those uh, reflects what, ma'am? Uh, the very last? Uh, the last one at 12.05 said someone just beat the hell out of me. 
Is that what you wanted? So, so at some point in time, in at the beginning of 1205 to the end of 1205, going into 1206, that's when you were attacked, correct? Apparently so, yes. Yes. So this attack was very short, wasn't it? It was, most certainly. And this person came, uh, I believe you said, from your right, correct? Is that a yes? Yes, it is. He grabbed your left arm. Yes, yeah, cool. Correct? He did. Definitely. And you want her to act a lot on the whole deal? Yeah, pretty much. That music. Down to the oh, ground yeah. you went, correct? And he, he was actually... I'm sorry, you didn't answer that last question. Down to the ground. Uh, yes, I did. Okay. okay, so you were knocked down to the ground, and he fell with you, correct? I, I would not say that he fell with me versus he pushed me down and went down with me. I, I, I could not tell you that. I don't know if that he went down place. with you, correct? He went down with me, yes. And he was uh, on your left side, correct? Yes. All right. And did he grab your arm and go down? Yeah, it's right here. From here to here. That's where he grabbed your arm. So for the record, you're, you're, you're um, pointing to your left upper arm and shoulder? Yes, from here to here. And when he did this, you didn't see anything in his hand, did you? It was dark and I did not see anything. Okay. And he put his arms around you, did he not, at some point in time? I do not remember that. Okay. Um, you don't remember him stabbing you either, though, do you? I remember him doing something to me. I thought he was hitting me, but apparently it was so sharp, whatever he was using, it was stabbing me. But you didn't know that? You didn't feel Not at the time. time? No, I did not. Okay, we need just one person to talk at a time. I know it's an emotional thing. I mean, if I went through it, I'd be very emotional. But you got to let him ask a question. Okay. And otherwise, we're going to make a mistake. And I'm sorry. I'm trying to answer his questions. I I, you're doing a great, great job. But just let him finish. I'm sorry about it. Interrupt me. And it's not until approximately 12.07, almost two minutes later, that you notice that you're cut, correct? Yes. Okay. So you didn't feel the pain of a stab at any point in time, did you? I did not. Okay. And the cut that you uh, was inflicted to your face, uh, did you receive stitches for that? Uh, it took two hours to stitch my face alone. May I ask how many stitches you received? I do not know the answer to that. My husband could probably answer that as he was there. They had to knock me out. It was a deep cut and I have nerve damage from that cut. Thank you. You didn't see him make any type of a stabbing motion, did you? It happened so fast. It seemed to blur. No. He didn't say anything to you during this period of time, did he? No, he did not. Right. When he turned around and uh, gave you the phone, did you say anything to him? I do not think I did. I'm pretty did sure you, I did not say anything Did you to look him. at him funny? I would probably just happy I got my phone back. I have no idea how I looked at him. All right. Uh, so... Your expression, can you describe what your expression would have been towards him at the time he returned the phone? I would think I would have just been happy he gave me my phone back. Maybe I smiled. During your interviews with the police, you had indicated that there have been times when you have suffered alcoholic blackouts, correct? Um, I don't know that I said that. <laughs> now, uh, the fact is that when you were shown photographs, uh, you didn't, in actuality, you didn't, you couldn't identify the individual seated there as the assailant, could you? Yes. You could. No, I could. Well, you could not. Correct. Yeah. I so I understand. You could not mm -hmm. positively identify this man as your assailant. Could not you? until the second time I looked at him. 
When was the second time you looked at it? Five or ten minutes. I actually, well, uh, five or ten more minutes. I'm, I'm guessing five minutes later. All right, let me understand this. So you looked at the photographs, you picked uh, number four, I believe, or number three, correct? Where is it? I wouldn't have any idea of the numbers. You, you picked number four. I'm, can you see this from here, from where I'm standing? Mm -hmm. You picked this individual, and, um, and are those your initials there? They are. And that picture actually, and that picture looks more like him than the picture of him. And no and So I understand. So they, after you circled number four, the police officer, did he take the pictures from you? Yes, I think so. And did there come a time, some point in time later, that he put the pictures back in front of you? I asked if I could turn around and not look at the pictures and close my eyes and try to remember that night specifically, try to picture those, those faces with a hoodie on. And I turned around, not looking at the pictures, and tried to think back and clearly think of what I thought that person looked like that very night. And that's when I turned around and changed my mind and did put down number two. And I think that the officer would testify that that's the case and that I think there was someone else present. And what you say in your statement is that number three is closest, correct? I get, I'm sure you're right, yes, if you're reading it, I'm, I will agree You don't with you. say that it's him, you say it's the closest to him, correct? Yes. Nothing further, Judge. Mr. Shep, I have anything further? No, read Okay, thank you very much, ma'am, for your time today. I'm sorry about what occurred. Oh, thank you.